So, previously we established that Akimitsu Akagami is a young boy with daddy issues. His father is a creep who is always with different women. His entire philosophy is based on the fact that no one can live alone, which might sound neat but is just his way of justifying his own actions. Completely creeped out by his father, Akagami decides to never follow in his footsteps. But the apple doesn't fall that far from the tree as he starts having impure and pervy thoughts the moment he meets a young pretty girl. Devastated by this state of affairs, he decides to go all out and devote his life to a temple by becoming like a Buddhist monk. However, things are never so simple for anime characters as the temple he chooses for his new lifestyle turns out to be full of women who are, well, <clears throat> arousing to say the least. Moreover, the eldest sister among the bunch is the girl he encountered before, and so begins his life to renounce his worldly desires. The eldest sister, Aoba Yuzuki, is on board with Akagami working there as she trusts him for some reason. She announces in front of everyone that he'll be paying his debt to the temple with his body. Okay. Everybody starts panicking as they don't really like one of their own being a subject to some sleazy young man's scandalous tactics. They all start asking if she was forced into this, or if he has some dirt on her that is forcing her to bring a man into a woman-only temple. At first, Yuzuki tries to explain the situation, but it quickly becomes impossible with everyone literally ramming her with questions. And questions aren't the only thing that's gonna be rammed tonight with Akagami around, <laughs> am I right? So, to make a statement, she breaks a rock with a single chop, indicating that she's able to protect herself very well if the need arises. So, their worries are pointless. She then explains that paying with his body doesn't necessarily mean what they're all thinking. <laughs> oh, really? She explains that he will be doing chores around the temple, such as cleaning and cooking, so that he can work off his debt. You know, a lot of confusion could have been avoided if she had just said he's gonna do manual labor instead, but paying with his body? And so, the crisis with the girls is averted for now. They all unwillingly accept him, but from the looks of it, they don't plan to have him around for long. Yuzuki takes Akagami to his room, while the other ones go to another room for a secret meeting. They simply cannot accept that a man is going to be living there from now on. So, they start making strategies to drive him out. As they are discussing their plans, a really mature and chill girl named Kiki walks in. She comes in and seems to know everything that has been going on there and tells everyone that driving out the boy is pretty easy. They just have to seduce him and show Yuzuki how lecherous men can be. Alright Kiki, hold your horses. Everybody is on board with the idea except Yuzuki's sister, Tsukuyo. She thinks that it's a really outlandish idea and they should not carry it out. I mean, she is making a lot of sense here to be honest. But Kiki mocks her for this and starts making fun of her. After a brief exchange, she gets on board with the idea as well. But now, a new problem rises. Who would be the one to bell the cat? Who would sacrifice her integrity to drive the lecherous demon out of this temple? Naturally, Kiki has the perfect idea of who it's gonna be. She tells everyone that it must be someone who has a curvy body, and naturally, everyone starts pointing at Tsukuyo, since she seems to be very well endowed in certain areas. She rejects the idea completely and tells everyone that they should stop trying to put her on the spot here. Everyone points out that her rack is the largest one of them all, so it's natural that she's the one to do it. She tries to put it all on Kiki as she points out that she is well endowed as well, but she makes a joke that she is a nun and would not want to be involved in any pervy acts. Ma'am, your cleavage is literally visible. Like, I didn't see any nuns with that getup. Tsukuyo realizes that she is messing with her and would definitely not back down from this construct of purity even if she wanted to, and so she agrees to take on this dirty task. The next day, unlike most good-for-nothing perverted people, Akagami takes out the trash, cleans the temple, and makes everything more beautiful. He also cooks delicious food for everyone and is more than ready for any insult that the girls might throw at him. Tsukuyo comes into the room while flaunting her well-endowed parts. Akagami sees her chest and starts having pervy thoughts. He tries to control his emotions, but it is still obvious where he was looking just now. So, Tsukuyo shows a smug face and then sits down. She sees that he is the one who has cooked the food. She realizes that she doesn't need to go for the seduction strategy just yet, as there are other ways to get rid of him. She decides to call his food the worst food ever and get him fired on charges of incompetence. But as soon as she takes the first bite, she knows that it would be outrageous to call that food bad. The boy somehow cooks better than everyone in the temple, and this is one of the best things that she has eaten in a long while. Since plan A failed, she tells him to go and do the cleaning chores, but he tells her that he has already cleaned everything. She goes to the hallway and sees the shining floors, then moves to the store and sees that he has cleaned it too. 
And lastly, even the bathroom is shining, with not a single speck of dust. And so, Tsukuyo is forced to resort to the seduction strategy, her last resort. She tries to seduce him for the first time, but it kind of fails, so she decides to do it in the bath. Yep, that's a clear shot. Akagami is peacefully taking a bath while reminiscing the beautiful memories of seeing the cleavage of both of those girls. He is also thinking about repaying Yuzuki, but his peaceful time in the bath is interrupted when Tsukuyo comes into the bathroom and starts undressing. He gets scared and runs back to the tub to hide his private parts, but she keeps on coming. She seems to be very confident on the outside, but in her mind she completely fumbled the whole strategy. The plan was to make him look bad, not herself. She barged into the bathroom and started undressing. That was the most indecent thing to do. Now she looks like a pervy girl who's unable to control her desires. But now that she has done all this, she decides to keep going and starts undressing even more. Ooh, I like where this is going. Akagami gets really scared while also excited, but after a certain point, Tsukuyo starts getting afraid that she might expose a bit too much of her private parts. Thankfully, boxes start falling on her. Yes, thankfully. Akagami, in his act of quick action and kindness, rushes to her aid and stops the boxes from falling. This puts both of them in a really awkward position, where it looks like Akagami is forcing himself upon her. Another box falls and this leads to a kiss between the two. Damn, those boxes are more Cupid than Cupid itself. But just as soon as both of them kiss, Yuzuki comes into the bathroom and sees the two of them. She looks very disappointed and tells Akagami to leave. And so, the mission of the girls has been accomplished. Akagami is officially out of the house. But now, Tsukuyo is having second thoughts. She keeps thinking to herself on why she is feeling such emotions while the other girls congratulate her. Akagami leaves the temple as he has failed in his quest to leave his worldly desires behind and become a Buddhist monk. Tsukuyo then makes her way towards Yuzuki so that she can explain the situation as she now realizes that he was just protecting her and being punished for such an act would be too unfair. But Yuzuki starts avoiding her. This surprises her a lot as she shouldn't be mad at her at all. So she rushes to her room and she then straight up asks her what's wrong. Whoa girl, like who does that? Yuzuki tells her that she knows about the whole seduction strategy thing, and so the two of them talk it out as they both know that it wasn't Akagami's fault. But then Tsukudo starts asking about why she let him work here in the first place. Yuzuki tells her that she knows it doesn't make sense for a man to work in an all-woman temple, but it's what their mother would have done. The two sisters bond over the memories of their mother and decide to apologize to Akagami. But little do they know that he has already left. And so, a search begins for the man they all wanted out of there in the first place. On Akagami's end, he tries to go to all the places he could think of, but is unable to find anywhere to stay. So he stays under the bridge like your average homeless man. It starts pouring down and just as he starts having depressive thoughts, Yuzuki comes with her clothes fully wet. She tells him that she just meant for him to leave the bathroom and that he cannot live alone. He needs to rely on others to survive as that is the way human beings can live. She invited him back into the temple and Tsukuyo comes there to give him her blessing since she now has no problem with him. And so everyone goes back to the temple, despite the other girls still being wary of him. His normal life begins there again when the third Aoba sister thanks him for lightening the mood around the temple as it has been a while since she has seen her sisters act so dumb and carefree. She tells him that being pervy isn't a bad thing and that her sisters are pervs too, so they would actually appreciate him peeping on them while they take a bath. Now, that's an offer that Akagami just couldn't say no to. He has his doubts, but he gets trapped by the provocation and gets smacked around in return, vowing to not be his pervy self again. And on this note, our recap for today comes to an end. So, the real question is, will Akagami be able to control his worldly desires? Hell, I don't know, would you? Let us know down in the comments, and as for everything else, drop us a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Anime Surveo to see more episodes recapped coming up. With that said, thanks for watching. Peace!